All right, brothers, now I've gathered you all here to discuss the future of Lego movies, now that we all know that Universal Pictures are the ones at the helm. Can I join? Uh, it's him again. N no, little cousin, you can't come in right now. We're all having a very important no. business meeting. You guys were all talking about Lego movies, weren't you? Hey, you know, I'm a Lego movie too. Nobody cares about you, Ninjago. What the? He's not even finished yet, and yet I'm the one that's not allowed at the table. Are you serious, guys? Oh, good grief. You guys just don't really understand me. I'm just really underrated. I have a great foreshadowing scene. It has a great callback. How's this for a callback? <laughs> you missed. Oh, you'll get it later. Well, anyway, can I... No! The Lego Movie. A surprise hit of a movie that no one was really rooting for at first. It seemed like such a cash grab, you know? And yet, little did we know, the messaging behind this movie would be one that really strikes at the heart of kids and fanatics alike about how to properly handle playing around with Lego. And today, we're tackling the scene that changed the Lego Movie. There's only one option, let's be honest. While this movie is crammed in with a million animated details and references, how every frame is dipped in reality by using actual Lego stop motion techniques to inform the logic of this universe, the scene that really turns this movie on its head and holds the most thematic weight is obviously the moment our protagonist Emmett falls off the table in real life and catches a glimpse of the non-Lego reality that surrounds his existence. You know the one. So with that in mind, I think that's enough of the introductions. Lego movie. <clears throat> you want some context? Uh, it's kind of your classic fantasy hero adventure act, but with every Warner Bros IP under the sun somehow involved. Emmett is your generic everyman hero at the center, and they're out to foil the evil plans of President Business. But alas, every last one of them is captured. And Emmett, with this brick here, the piece of resistance as it's called, stuck to his back, is strapped up to the batteries of the self-destruct mechanism of the overly tall tower. As it stands, everybody will soon be blown up, and President Business will get everything he wants, gluing all of the LEGO world into place with Craggle. Did you get all of that? <laughs> Somewhat classic stuff. And now Emmett, to save everybody, dislodges the battery the only way he knows how, by diving off of the edge of the tower and into the infinite abyss of nothingness, as it is known. The generic everyman, who turned out to be just a regular person after all, has sacrificed himself to save everyone around him. And as they commiserate and consolidate on the moment for a moment, they burst into action to save the day of the other cities out there. With a speech about how anybody, even the most regular of regular people, have the power inside of them to be groundbreakers. And I mean literally, break the ground, peel up the pieces, tear apart your walls, inspiring the masses to make whatever they want. And yes, that does include from Charlie Day's Benny, uh... Which, by the way, I know everyone talks about the droplets of shower or the ocean animated in this movie, but I love how they have fully realized frame smears in Lego form for Benny's little outburst here. Anyway, finally, with all these pieces in motion, we return back to Emmett with... I mean, I guess that is to be expected. But it's probably a nice little nod to 2001's A Space Odyssey chucked in there. Plus, it's apparently confirmed by creators Lord and Miller that the Build Your Own Bricks revelation from the people is also a reference to the apes in 2001 A Space Odyssey as well, so it very much lines up there. And yes, they're still Lego pieces, just a little extra blurred. Am I just gonna keep... And actually, all of these varieties of Abyss could easily be more references to the work of Douglas Trumbull, the visual effects guy for 2001 and other iconic works. All simply demonstrative of the severity of depth Emmett is falling at this point to be essentially breaking reality. Until eventually... The Human World, featuring tons of lens aberration, radial blurs and a heavy dark vignette. The thickest sense of dizziness you can portray. Followed by...
Now I thought for the longest time this was his face distorted across the entire frame like a funky panorama effect, but I think it's just a super close up. Either way, we're gonna start getting philosophical now, as in this reality, Emmett cannot move. He can only think. Bricksburg. All of Bricksburg and all the other worlds have been meticulously built in real life in the basement of some real-world house, and Emmett is the only one who has gained this perception. <sighs> it sure is nice to finally lie down after an awful day. This is not what I meant! <laughs> How did this happen?! What in the world is that? And as Emmett comes to terms of what his eyes are seeing, the camera slowly eases towards him, realization setting in. It's not just that the environments have been built in this world, the story itself is man-made. As this child is saying Luigi's dialogue lines for him. Hopefully this doesn't curdle into a full-on existential crisis for the man. Uh-oh. No. No! Oh, no, 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 hey, don't eat me, don't eat me! The motions are still pretty simple, a quick point of view shot as he spots Emmett on the ground, then the switch to Emmett's perspective of the response, a wide angle of him being lifted tiny against the scale of this world, and rising higher from the kid's view as he addresses Emmett and reveals a cheeky extra bit of set design blurred in the background. Hi, Emmett. Hi? Is this the man? The views between the two of them continue, Emmett's face moving closer in a controlled fashion, whilst the kid's face distorts around the edges of the frame thanks to the lingering dizziness. One is in their comfortable territory, and the other clearly is not. The power dynamic is stark, even if they're being treated as equal in behaviour and composition. Upstairs. This mythological character we've been hearing about throughout the runtime of this film, clearly representative of a god for the LEGO inhabitants, literally from upstairs and crafting all that we've seen before us, typically. Revealing his appearance in teasing fashion with his first steps, then his shadow, then his legs, and finally himself, blasted with angelic white backlight to hide his face just that little bit more and make him seem more ethereal as he seems to the LEGO land. What happened? Oh no, no, this is a disaster. And then you can recognise who it is. It's Will Ferrell, which isn't just a cheeky cameo appearance from a celebrity, he's been involved throughout this movie as he's the voice actor of President Business himself. Linking all to the thematics of this movie that it's the same guy who wants to glue the world together who is standing above this Lego landscape with the power to design in his ideals. What? The, the, why is the dragon on top of the luxury condo development? Not to mention, he seems to have some of the ideals of President Business as well. Uninvested in the chaos of life and wanting organisation. But why is it here? What is this all about? Well... I was just playing and... But this is dad stuff, okay? Every beat of this movie, every colourful character, storyline and eccentricism comes from this kid here just playing with the toys he's got around him. And that's the point. Lego is a toy franchise that has reached the most amount of people ever for a toy company, I'm pretty sure. When someone repasted the core idea into a video game, it then became the biggest video game of all time, you know? And with that kind of broad audience, you get all types of people. Those that see Lego as an expression of art to be perfected, methodical and glued to maintain its integrity. All of this that you see before you is all your father's. And everything is thought out. And those that make up some nonsense and just have fun with the collection they have and their own imagination. Emmett is a miniature projection this kid has implanted of himself. Just an ordinary person with the strange imagination to create something. It doesn't perfectly make sense like a dragon on a luxury condo, although that's totally symbolic of hoarding wealth. Come on, Dad. And as for President Business, well... That too is a creation of this kid as a more true to perception projection of his own father. The villain of the story dominating over his reality and wanting to keep everything prim and perfect. And in telling this story like this, the creators themselves are letting you know which kind of Lego player base they prefer the ideals of. You, you know the rules, this isn't a toy. Um, uh, it kind of is. Nice guy!
Ah, oh, it's not too bad. Honestly, you get used to it after a while. Come join the club. I can only breathe through my anus. And throughout this back and forth between father and son about certain artistic and playlistic choices. You accidentally, expertly, carefully took the entire top off of that tower. The camera work is doing one thing pretty interestingly. As a scene of a father scolding their child, you would expect a back and forth of high and low angles on the two. And to be fair, the father is shown from quite a low angle. From Emmett's perspective, he is seen as quite this godly figure, untouchably tall and warping on the edges and all. But when it comes to the non-Lego perspectives, it's over the shoulder and low from the kid's side. But reverse the other way, this child is not being looked down on. The father may be venting about his concerns, but the movie is not on his side. The cinematography is not belittling him. In fact, the camera is placed so, so subtly at a higher angle, it's almost imperceivable. What a theme. Seeing the kid as almost neutral or equal makes this rant seem less founded, as the kid is doing what is intended for toys, playing with them. And to really nail home the connections between father and business, Will Ferrell moves over to a drawer to reveal... Not only is business doing it as his evil deed, but the dad is literally gluing his works together. He is such a perfectionist. And on that cue, we then begin to resume events with the Lego reality at the same time as Emmett is in the real world. Naturally, starting with President Business as he whips out thousands of micromanagers tasked with gluing elements of civilization together, perfectly posed. <laughs> The father now shot like a slow motion ominous kaiju, destructive with every step as he is destroying this work through a certain lens, placing it solidly in place. Fire in the hole! And it continues, the sequence of shots making it seem as though father is seeing them in motion when it's the kid's imagination filling in the keyframed events. In reality, it's almost the same, but this static reality is all that father sees it as, missing that imaginary perspective others have when they're young. No, wait! Oh, we're going down! Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no! And this time selling the idea via an L cut, so that the audio from the imaginary actions, voices, and deconstruction sounds play as the father is shattering it apart in the next shot. I assume the kid's just been saying these lines in his head, though they have established he says some dialogue out loud. Probably a good idea to not be vocal at this moment. Oh, finally, some peace and quiet. Wait, no, no, no. Ah, come on! And now we've seen the basics of these parallels, it's time for a montage effect. Now, from Emmett's perspective. Stop! Since it's relatively boring content to watch a middle-aged man glue each brick piece together, it's much nicer to just trim across the details like an Edgar Wright sequence. Usually that means zooms on every quick shot, but this time it's just the one on Emmett's face. Still fun to observe all the same. And for one more match cut with a new spin of technique, we now get... Sir, there be too many micromanagers! What am I holding here? battleship. No, it's a hodgepodge. The micromanagers are literally the father's micromanaging work, and so they too are animated on his IRL dialogue. He doesn't intend to play the part, but he is doing so. And to finalize this sequence of non-abstract horror, the father finally spots and targets Emmett himself. Got glue all over that construction worker. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! It's a final goodbye on Emmett's part as he can only observe unmovingly from above as his friends are entrapped, and now will be actioned upon immediately himself. <gasps> the piece of resistance! But there's a hint of hope. And after all this time, Emmett can perceive pretty clearly in this reality now, ready to hear the themes of the movie fed directly into his IRL dipped ears. He is a ordinary, regular, generic construction worker, and I need to put him back where he belongs. But he doesn't care. It doesn't hit him anymore. He's already done his brooding over this revelation, because it's also not that important. The very message the kid was trying to express in his playtime is that this random guy can be the hero. And Emmett believes it, knowing what step to take next if he just has the bravery and tenacity to act upon it. Hey! 
It's a big moment, but Emmett is still small scale. And a couple gags later of the same idea, eventually Emmett fully... Bringing forth the kids' attention to bring it all together. All it takes is a quick distraction from Dad, and then... It's up to you now, Emmett. It's time for our positive swell of optimism. Morgan Freeman's voice in Emmett's ear as we heard from earlier in the movie. Believe. That was likely inspired by this poster when the kid was making up the story earlier in the movie. All you have to do is to believe. Oh, another dance party in a movie. Why do they always do that? I hate dance parties. Eh, it could be worse. And as the music bolsters up, Emmett is sent back through the Tunnel of Lights, now visibly labelled as the Magic Portal, which, while pretty accurate, is also a direct reference to the first LEGO animation ever made. The Magic Portal is what it was called. Very cool and Emmett is dropped back into his reality. <laughs> Transitioning us from the JPEGs of reality down to the occasional bricks of Lego to the stabilized swirling of lights. And as we cut to Emmett's close-up face, he finally emotes again from the default face of our dimension to the loosening twitches of animation. He's back in the lands of Lego. Fully empowered with the piece of resistance, the understandings of a master builder, and the background knowledge of his entire being, in reality, it is the child, Finn by the way is his name, actively choosing to resist against his dad's actions while he's away. The final battle can begin, as both an action sequence of Lego vs Robo micromanagers, as well as the conflict between an IRL father and son, and their disagreements on how to handle Lego and interact with each other. The story, it turns out, is more than just an action-adventure plot with all the Warner Brothers IP under the sun somehow involved, but a relationship drama between members of family. And it was all established in rapid succession with this scene here that undeniably flips the entire concept of the Lego movie on its head and leaves us with thematic messaging that strikes far more directly than any of us could have imagined. You might see a mess. What I see are people taking what you made and making something new out of it. Finn, did you make all of this? And as the father catches up and spots his own Lego reinterpretation, he too understands a perspective other than his own. Finally seeing eye to eye with his son as Emmett gets president business to see eye to eye too. And it starts from this absurd twist. This was the scene that changed the Lego movie. Well, it was that, or the one where Batman threw batarangs for 30 seconds. Wham! Kazap! <laughs> for now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. Everything okay? Yeah, yeah, I was just... I was just thinking to myself, um... You know, future LEGO movies, they're gonna have Universal Pictures IPs instead, so... Oh, right. So that includes... That's Jaws, Jurassic Park, King Kong, Adam's Family, The Minions, Fast and Furious, Shrek, How to Train Your Dragon, E.T., Megamind, Back to the Future, Kung Fu Panda, Madagascar, Prince of Egypt, B-Movie, Wallace and Gromit and the Were-Rabbit, Happy Death Day, I liked that one. Despicable Me, Scott Pilgrim. Monsters vs. Aliens, Happy Gilmore. Trolls, Yesterday. Ants, Peabody and Sherman. Boss Baby, James Bond. Pacific Rim, Secret Life of Pets. Curious George, Rise of the Guardians. Abominable, Love Actually. Fifty Shades of Grey, Shaun of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead, Turbo. Shark Tail, Casper. Over the Hedge, Illuminations Grinch. Cats. Nope. Licorice Pizza, The Purge, Coraline, 1917, I don't think they'll do that one. Bridget Jones, Home, Sinbad, The Mummy, The Bad Guys, Doolittle, Johnny English, Hop, Sing, Jurassic Park, Halloween, Spirit, Play Miserable, Mr. Bean's Holiday, Bruce Almighty, Hot Fuzz, The Croods, Flushed Away, El Dorado, Beethoven, Chicken Run, and Super Mario maybe. I don't know about that one. Damn, that's pretty interesting actually. I wonder where they'll go next. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't really know. Jesus Christ! Sorry, mate. I kind of got soaked up in the moment. I forgot about the whole faceless thing you had going on. I'm still making these sounds exclusively through my anus.